Hello, historians, and welcome to your Unit 5.6 podcast lesson. Before we get started with the actual historical content, let's go ahead and complete the do now. For the directions, it states, break down the objective by circling, boxing, and underlining the objective components. We're going to go ahead and pause the video now for you to complete this section of the lesson, and then we'll come back and go over the answers for the do now. Hitting pause now. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at our objective for today and the different components. You should have gone ahead and circled define, list, and identify, as these are the three thinking skills we're going to be using today. For content, you should have boxed the term great powers, because you are going to, again, learn about this term and be able to define it. You should have also boxed actions each of the great powers from today's lecture took before World War I. And you should have boxed main background causes those actions represent. This objective might sound a little bit familiar. Uh, last lesson for the Unit 5.5 lecture notes, we had this same exact objective. The only difference was we were looking at different countries. We analyzed Germany, Russia, Great Britain, and France during the Unit 5.5 notes. For today's notes, Unit 5.6, we're going to be doing the same exact historical objective, but now we're going to be looking at new countries. We're going to be analyzing Italy, Serbia, Austria-Hungary, and the Ottomans. For the last part of the do now, you should have underlined completing their IDs with 80% accuracy. Today's lesson is going to be a little bit different in that rather than giving you an exit ticket, you're going to be completing the IDs at the end of class and turning those IDs in today. So it's extremely important that you make sure you're going through all of the lecture today so you can fully use your notes for the IDs that you will be turning in at the end of class for participation. If we take a look at our agenda, we've just completed the do now, which was breaking down our objective. We're currently going over the target. In just a moment, we'll be jumping into marginalia notes. There is a video clip we'll be watching if time allows, but if not, we can skip that. And then we'll be giving you about 15 to 20 minutes to complete the IDs today. In terms of homework due today, your Unit 5 Formative Assessment 2 is due today. We'll be collecting that. And also the IDs assigned today as the exit ticket are also due. So two key items that you should be submitting today at the end of class for credit. In terms of homework due next class, the Unit 5 Formative Assessment 3 is a take-home that you are going to be receiving today. You need to make sure that you complete that and then submit that next class. So for periods 1 and 2, your Unit 5 Formative Assessment 3 take-home will be due on Thursday. Next class on Thursday, we are also going to be doing a binder setup. Please bring your binder and all the Unit 5 items with you so that you can go ahead and set up this binder. Again, binders are worth a formative assessment score. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into the notes, Unit 5.6. These notes are going to be focusing in on the Balkan Peninsula. And by the end of these notes, students will be able to list two actions each of the great powers from today's lecture took before World War I and identify which main background cause those actions represent by completing their IDs with 80% accuracy. So let's go ahead and take a look at some geography before we get started. Make sure that you're filling in the blanks on your map. In case you're not familiar with the two main ocean ways of the world, we have the Pacific Ocean. Again, remember that the world is a sphere, meaning circular. So the Pacific Ocean wraps around the sphere. The Pacific Ocean meets the western coast of the United States and South America, but then also hits the eastern coast of Asia. And then in between uh, North America, South America, Africa, and Europe, we have the Atlantic Ocean. So these are the three main bodies of water that you should be familiar with. And the focus for today and the focus for most of this unit is going to be the European continent. Um, we talked about uh, in the last couple lessons, how World War I starts here in this area of Europe called the Balkan Peninsula. 
and that will eventually spread to all of Europe, and it will eventually spread all to the west, uh, rest of the globe. But for the sake of today and for the sake of most of the unit, we're really going to only focus in on the fighting that happens in Europe, specifically on the western front, which borders France, and on the eastern front, which borders Russia. So again, Europe is going to be where most of World War I will be fought. Go ahead and make sure that you've got these blanks filled in, a total of six blanks before we jump to the next slide. So let's take a look at the pre, meaning before, pre-World War I great powers. So the countries with lots of power before World War I. Now last lesson during the Unit 5.5 notes, we talked about Great Britain, France, Germany, and Russia. And we talked about what these great power countries were doing in Europe before the war even started. We learned that they were practicing militarism and forming alliances and practicing imperialism and practicing nationalism. Today, for the Unit 5.6 notes, we're going to focus on these four new countries. These four countries are also pre-World War I great powers, so they are also countries before World War I started that had a lot of power and a lot of influence. The first country of focus is going to be Italy, and we're going to find that Italy is going to kind of be jumping from alliance to alliance. They're going to start off on one side during the war, and then they're going to go ahead and jump to a different side, a different alliance during the war. And one of the things that's going to cause Italy to jump back and forth between different alliances is they're looking for the best deal. Pretty much if they feel one side is going to win the war, then they're going to jump over to that winning side because winners of a war normally get land. And then if they feel like that side they're on is going to lose, then they're going to leave that alliance and jump into the other alliance that they believe is going to win. The second country of focus for today is Serbia, and we're going to find that Serbia is going to be one of the main, main, main countries uh, in the start of World War I. We're also going to be taking a look at the Ottoman Empire and then the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And if you've forgotten what the word empire means, we'll be going over that definition in just a moment. But the key thing to know is that these two countries right here the fact that they are titled empire at the end is pretty much telling us that they're practicing intensive imperialism. And just a reminder that this area right here of Europe is the Balkan Peninsula. This is where we're going to see some huge issues erupt between two of the great power countries listed here. So the Balkan Peninsula, um, now for the sake of making your life easier, in our class, I will allow you to write Balkan Peninsula just as BP. And I'll allow you in class to refer to it as the BP. But when you are outside of the classroom, you want to say Balkan Peninsula because nobody's going to know what you mean by BP. Okay, so in our class, we can say BP and write BP, but outside of the classroom, you should be writing Balkan Peninsula. And again, this is the Balkan Peninsula, this region right here of Europe. So just to give you some understanding of what peninsula is, a peninsula is a piece of land almost fully surrounded by water or projecting out into a body of water. And we can see that the Balkan Peninsula is a peninsula because it's surrounded by water here on the western side, surrounded by water on the southern side, and then surrounded by water on the eastern side. And so this is considered a peninsula. Now the BP, the Balkan Peninsula, had been long controlled by the Austrian-Hungarian Empire and the Ottoman Empire. Now, again, to make your life easy, when we are using Austrian-Hungarian in world history or Ottoman Empire in world history, I will allow you to write it shorthand by writing A-H-E and O-E. I'll also allow you to say these acronyms as well 
but outside of the class, you should be writing and pronouncing the entire name. So this Balkan Peninsula area, this BP area, has long been controlled by the Austrian-Hungarian Empire and also long controlled by the Ottoman Empire. So these two countries are practicing intensive imperialism. They've gone into the Balkan Peninsula, they've conquered a bunch of victim countries, and they've sucked these victim countries into their empire. And so an empire is an extensive group of countries conquered and under the rule of one leader or country. So an empire is a fancy way of telling a bully country, wow, you've been able to conquer lots of victim countries. If we take a look down here, before World War I even starts, there were lots of empires. There was the German Empire and the Russian Empire and the Austrian-Hungarian and German Empire. And so we can see here in this map that lots of countries before World War I even started were practicing imperialism. Go ahead and fill in this blank here. This last bullet point on empires is a perfect example of how imperialism is being practiced and we learned about imperialism in Unit 4. Now the BP, the Balkan Peninsula, was called the European Powder Keg. Now if you don't know anything about weapons or guns, a powder keg refers to a barrel of gunpowder. And so you can imagine that if this area of Europe, the Balkan Peninsula, is being nicknamed the powder keg, meaning the barrel of gunpowder, you can imagine just how much tension is taking place here in this area of Europe. And a lot of that tension is coming from the practice of imperialism. The fact that the Austrian-Hungarians and the fact that the Ottomans are practicing imperialism and are taking over victim countries and are forcing those victim countries to basically be victims. Now, the interesting thing about this BP Balkan Peninsula area is that this tension, this imperialism and the creation of victim countries being pushed down by bully countries, all of this tension had been occurring for over 400 years. And if you can imagine, when one area is experiencing a lot of tension and hatred and bullying for 400 years, it's only a matter of time before it explodes. And it's that explosion that's going to lead to World War I. So let's talk um, about the Ottoman Empire. Let's talk about one of these bully countries. Again, we're going to be abbreviating and referring this uh, to this as the OE. We can see the Ottoman Empire is a very large empire. The Ottomans technically started here in what's now known as Turkey, but over the course of many, many years, were able to go out into Europe, specifically the Balkans. They're able to go into what's now Saudi Arabia. They're able to go into what's now today known as Northeastern Africa. And they basically conquered all of this territory. This is a perfect example of their imperialistic actions. The Ottoman Empire, OE, today is just Turkey. So even though back in 1639, this is how large the Ottoman Empire was back then, and this is how large the Ottoman Empire was right before World War I in 1913, today the Ottoman Empire is just the country of Turkey. And like this bullet point says, the Ottoman Empire today is just Turkey and had begun to deteriorate, meaning shrink. World War I starts in 1914, which is one year after this map, but we can see that way before World War I, the Ottoman Empire was extremely massive, and as we got closer to World War I, had started to shrink. Now, why is the Ottoman Empire getting smaller? Well, inspired by nationalism, meaning pride for their own countries, several ethnic groups, several of the victim countries within the Ottoman Empire had started to revolt and started to form their own countries. So again, a lot of the Ottoman Empire was made up of victim countries, over the years, as we got closer and closer to World War I, a lot of these victim countries had nationalism, had lots of pride in their own culture, pride in their own languages, pride in having their own country. And so a lot of these victim countries started to revolt and were successful in revolting and were able to basically overthrow the Ottomans. 
as they overthrew the Ottomans, Ottoman territory got smaller and smaller. Ottoman Empire was shrinking and deteriorating. Now, as this big bully country, the Ottoman Empire, as it starts to shrink and shrink, the status of the Balkan Peninsula became uncertain. It's kind of like when the teacher is absent, the status of the class becomes uncertain because the students in the classroom have a ton of liberty to make their own decisions. Now our podcast time's about to end. We're going to hit pause and jump into podcast two.